All right, my homebound superstars, what we need to know now is how do we use those seismic waves to learn about earthquakes? What do P and S waves tell us about earthquakes, and how do we even record and measure them? That's our topic today. What we use is what's called a seismograph. You can see one here. Basically what it is is a pan that's attached to this weight and the whole machine is bolted in the ground. The reason why it's bolted in the ground is we want to measure the movement of the ground and not the movement of the machine. So when the ground moves side to side here, the pen, because it's on a weight, stays in place and then draws lines on this drum of paper that's rolling around. So the machine that records that information is called a seismograph. Now, obviously the ground just doesn't just move left to right, so we have seismographs that, that measure uh, east, west, north, south, and up and down motion. And um, then they print it out in what's called a seismogram, and that's this guy right here. So there's that drum turning in its writing, um, and it's being electronically transmitted to that. So I'm going to draw a seismogram on here, and you're going to want to make sure that you draw the seismogram that I put on here and label all that information in your notes as well. Uh, because that's basically how we take the earthquake waves and learn from them about an earthquake. That's how we can figure out magnitude and all this other stuff. So here's a simple seismogram. This is the start right here. Okay. So we know that P waves are faster, so these are the P waves right here. S waves are slower, these are the S waves. If we measure the height of the S wave, because we know they do the most damage, this will tell us the magnitude of that earthquake. And if we measure the time that it takes between the arrival of the P wave and the arrival of the S wave, because we know they're not the same speed, then we can figure out the distance to the epicenter. Okay, so just to review here, a uh, seismogram, that's what these things are. And then make sure you write all that down. Again, pause the video if you need to, because I'm going to erase it all. Okay, we learned that P and S waves travel at different rates. Uh, the best example I can give you, uh, we'll take a couple of your classmates. So if you take Tristan Rao and Tristan Leonard and you take them out to the track and you have them run a mile, they're not going to run a mile at the same speed. And that means that one of them is always going to finish before the other. So if we measure that distance, we can know how long they've been running. So if they ran one mile, um, one Tristan would finish a minute before the other. If they ran two miles, then one Tristan would finish two minutes before the other. If they ran three, it'd be three minutes, and so on, and so on, and so on. And that's how we can figure out um, things about earthquakes. So if we look at um, this set of seismograms right here, you can see that the arrival time here of the P and the arrival time of the S wave here is um, about uh, four seconds here. Okay, if we look at the one below, it's about five seconds. If we look at this one down here, it's much closer. I'm sorry, this is minutes. Sorry, ten minutes. Okay? And so what that means is that this is the closest one, and this is the farthest one. Some people would argue you could also tell that by the height of the waves, right? Because the closer you are, the more damage that is caused by those. But that's kind of how we figure out distance. Okay? So we can tell the distance from that lag time between the two, and uh, we can tell the magnitude from the height of the S wave, which is uh, also what you learned on the previous slide. Now we can't locate it with just one, because if we uh, locate it with just one, then basically what we're doing is we're saying, okay, this one happened a certain distance away from this place and somewhere on the circle, but we don't know exactly where. And so in order to locate that, we actually need three different seismograph stations, and we need to draw a circle from each one, and we need to look, oh, well, where do they intersect? They intersect right here, so this is where the epicenter is. And so we actually need uh, three, it takes three seismographs to figure out where the epicenter of an earthquake is. Again, pause this if you need to write these down. So today you're going to do an assignment. It's going to be online. You're going to uh, use an interactive website to do two things. You're going to measure the magnitude of an earthquake and um, 
you're going to try to locate the epicenter using a lot of this information um, that we just talked about. Uh, the site's really good. Make sure that you uh, do the San Francisco earthquake and not a different one. The reason why is it's going to be tricky enough uh, alone doing any of them, but uh, the San Francisco one has the best data that's easiest to understand. The other ones are a little harder to interpret. Cool? All right, have fun.